Good morning. All right, so quick update on the John Deere 4430. Uh, we've been waiting a few days on parts now. Um, it's Monday today. So Friday we actually received the first box of parts. I haven't opened it up yet. I don't know what we got. Um, but the second box is supposed to be delivered today. I'm just on my way over to mom and dad's now. It might have even been delivered already. So we'll see when I get there. Also, we have a uh, sweeper that dad purchased at an auction. I don't know when that's coming. I think dad said it was supposed to come between 11 and 11.30. So yeah, so we got a new sweeper, skid steer, skid steer sweeper. And so that would be pretty cool. So we can do some parking lot cleanups now. We can uh, get rid of all the sand on the parking lots that we had. So I don't know if it's here yet already. I don't think it is. I'm hoping the second box of parts has come in so we can get started. Also with the 4430, uh, we put we took the head in. The head got tested. The head is good, no cracks, it's sound. Um, but the valve, uh, valve openings, the valves were worn right out. Uh, so not a big deal, we're putting new valves in. And what else? Oh yeah, the injectors were shot. The injectors were taken in and they were tested. They're all done, so they're getting rebuilt. Hey Molly, where are you going? I got your friend Eli. Let's check this out real quick because I gotta go take the trailer. I forgot, I have to take the trailer in for safety inspection. So let's take a look at this. We got a broom for a skid steer. It's a broom, but it says Mower King on it. I'm assuming they normally make mowers, but this will work great for cleaning the sand off parking lots. And that's exactly why we bought it. So, that will open up some new opportunity with what we do for snow removal, is after we sprayed all the sand, we can go clean it up for the customers afterwards. Because nobody likes a parking lot that's full of sand. Because sand actually on pavement will do the opposite of what it wants you to do, of what the purpose is of putting it down in the wintertime on top of the ice. It'll actually cause you to skid in the parking lot because it's little pebbles of sand, right? So you kind of skid on top of the sand while it keeps rolling. So, funny enough, it does the exact opposite when there's no ice. So, so that's good, that gives us a new opportunity. We can go clean up parking lots after we're done. Uh, clearing snow for the season like right now today we're at we're supposed to be plus 13 today and as you could tell most of our snow is gone so that means we're gonna start sweeping parking lots and getting stuff clean I've never dealt with that make before but you know what for the amount that we're we're gonna use it it'll probably last us a long time because we're only using it a couple times a year that's not true I'm sure we could use it on a few other job sites in the summertime clean it up uh, a few other things for customers, but uh, that'll work great for what we need. Anyways, I'm gonna head over and get the trailer hooked up so I can take it down for safety inspection. I don't know if we're hooking it up behind dad's truck or my truck, but um, yeah, we'll get that down for safety inspection. And then I think we're supposed to get started rebuilding that John Deere 4430 engine. All right, so we got our first box of parts. One more coming.
update of what's happening with this John Deere 4430 in frame overhaul. So, what we got going on is yesterday we checked the cam camshaft right here for end play. So, end play like in and out in there. It's nice and tight. There's no problems there. We also, we cleaned off the surface here. It doesn't look very clean because it's stained and dirty, but it's clean, it's smooth. There's no rough patches or any of the head gaskets stuck to the block. So that's what we were working on yesterday. We were cleaning all these surfaces, made sure everything's good and ready to go for installing all the parts. Uh, so I'm glad I did this. We laid out all our parts for what we have in the kit. There was some miscommunication. For what we were doing, there's two types of overhaul kits. One's an in-frame. One is a complete major overhaul, which does not come with certain bearings. So these are the connecting rod bearings. So that goes on the bottom of the piston right here. These guys slide up in here, and there's another one goes in the end cap that completes the circle. So this is what the brand new ones are supposed to look like minus the package, but no problems, no pitting, no scratching, no wear marks, no anything. Brand new, nice and shiny. This one here you can see has some pretty good pit marks, scratches, and just plain out worn completely. So standard size bearings. This is actually the main crank bearing, which the new kit that we bought did not come with these and we need them. So. I ordered those up today. They're on their way, should be here by the end of the week. We also had our injectors rebuilt, so they have new tips, new internals, everything's good for that. They apparently were just absolute crap. They were no good, so no wonder this thing was not starting very nicely at all. It was an ether baby. She needed a little sniff to get going every morning and when she cooled off. So what else came in the kit? Connecting rod bolts. So new bolts that go on the bottom of the connecting rods. So six sets of those, two in each. Uh, head gasket kit, other miscellaneous gaskets for everything else that we took off. Uh, oil pan gasket, that came in there. Okay, piston sleeves, jugs, liners, whatever you wanna call them, these are rough. They are extremely worn. I don't Not very nice at all. Just, they're junk now. These guys here, you can see the lines in there. Those are crosshatch lines. Those are supposed to be there. That is for lubrication. That allows this to slide up and down the sleeve without wearing the sleeve out. So the piston rings go in here. Oil goes in through the crosshatch lines, lubricates everything, so doesn't wear anything out. These piston heads, they are supposed to be high compression heads, which these piston ring grooves are set slightly higher. I don't know how many thousands of an inch, but they're set higher, closer to the top of the piston. It's supposed to create more compression. So easier starts and it's supposed to run better. They look identical to the old ones in position. Uh, Dad said they look identical. I can see a slight difference in this one actually, but you can see the major difference between this guy and this guy. Brand new, 15,000 15, plus hours. So in the kit also came six of these, six of these, Sit six sets of O-rings, six sets of piston rings. That's what came in the kit. It's uh, it's ready for a rebuild, pretty much ready to start putting everything back together, except for the main bearings that we need. So that's what came in the kit. Now on to this next one, Bolaris 805. There was water in the oil when I fired it up. I didn't know there was water in the oil because everything was all black. Oil, diesel engine is normally black. So didn't know they had 
it had water in it. So on the dipstick, I'm going to show you. So this thing, it leaks a little bit. It burns a little oil. So these are the, that's the full line. That's the add line. It usually sits in around here somewhere, right where my finger is. So when I fired it up, before I fired it up, I checked it. It was the oil level was right where my thumb is. That's way up. That is way up. So I thought the engine froze, cracked, and all the coolant ended up in the oil pan. That's actually not what happened as far as I know. We took the head off, cylinder head off. We went to go have it tested. It turns out the cylinder head is warped. So that is why water ended up in the oil pan. So this oil pan was way over full, uh, had oil in there, or uh, oil and water mixing in there. So we didn't find that out till we got here, checked the dipstick and found out it was actually gray. So good thing that there was water in the oil otherwise we would have never found this we started kind of panicking and we pulled the engine apart and thankfully we did so that is the connecting rod bearing that is a chunk missing out of there there are all these connecting rod bearings are extremely rough like check this guy out right here that is extremely worn. There are some heavy groove lines in there. I can catch them with my fingernail. That is, uh, if I had sent this tractor out this season, we were originally supposed to just adjust the PTO. If I had sent this tractor out this season, it would have just exploded or seized right up. One of the two. Usually it's not good when it happens. Catastrophic failure is what would happen. So, we bought this tractor brand new. Well, Dad bought this tractor brand new, 1990. It has 16,000 hours on it. This is one of the tractors would run pretty much every day, pulling a set of mowers. It was always, it was doing something. This tractor we bought used, which I want to say about 12,000 hours on it. A few years ago, we have put 3,000 hours on it in the last couple of years. Three, three or four thousand hours in the last couple of years. That's been our main tractor for pulling mowers and doing other miscellaneous jobs around the farm. So we put a lot of hours on machines. And mind you, they only run six months. They run from May till October for sure. That's their running time. The rest of the time they sit. These two anyway, they sit and do nothing. So. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do not forget to hit the like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Comment down below if you have any questions or comments regarding the John Deere 4430 in-frame or Bolaris 805. Maybe you guys have worked on one or maybe you guys operate either Bolaris or John Deere. I'm sure somebody operates John Deere. Bolaris is a little few and far between of who operates those machines. But, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care. God bless.